Right, okay, just a warning for this. There's going to be a lot of voice breaks in this, so I hope you don't Welcome mind. back to another episode of The Wild World of Pets! Mesocretus erratus. Today, in this episode, we will be taking a look at Mesocretus erratus, or more commonly known as the Golden Hamster, or in this household, Breadstick. As you can see, this is the natural habitat of the Golden Hamster, and hopefully we should be able to get a few shots of the hamster in action. As you can see, they have many whiskers, which are part of how they sense the food and their surroundings. Hello, Bridget. Today, in this video, we will be going over these four main aspects of a hamster's life. Sleep, food, exercise, and the history behind the, go the golden see, hamster. See, there is one more aspect I forgot to cover, and that is the lifespan, but that wouldn't take us too long anyway. So as you can see, my hamster, oh, sorry, uh, the golden hamster, uh, nicknamed Breadstick here, uh, is trying to get some sleep, but I'm sure I can't remember space. Um, hamsters usually get between six to eight hours of sleep a day. Mine gets 12, because he's lazy. Um, so we shall write that down as part of the experiment. Now, hamsters like to have their own little special area in which they, call, in which they will sleep, uh, but feel safe as well. Uh, this one seems to have it up here in his uh, penthouse, and down in this left corner, for some reason, we, we don't know. Here we have a wild golden hamster has sort of escaped his cage. Um, we'll be moving on to the exercise aspect now. Um, hamsters are literally the couch potatoes of the world, um, but however, when they do require exercise, they do it in short bursts, but absolutely go for it. Uh, as you can see, my hamster was just having a wash. Um, but here we have, as you can see, there was a wheel inside the cage, but we have his ball. So hopefully um, I will be able to try and get him so he doesn't escape. Um, here we go. Hello. Uh, where's he gone? Come here, couch potato. Come on, I've got to do this for school. Right, here we go. Uh, this is my hamster, uh, his name is Breadstick, bit of a weird name, but uh, yes. He's got sort of Apache colouring, so if you know what an Apache horse is, uh, that's the colours he's got. Sorry for voice breaks. Um, right, but exercise. So I've currently disturbed him sleeping, the things I'll do for school, um, and he will... Oh, come on. Yes, right. His, one of his most favourite forms of exercises is to go in his ball for a bit. Um, he will run around, we have a free room of the house, um, but we'll get him back in a while. Um, so exercise is, they do it in short bursts, um, but, or he does it in short bursts, but he will do it very fast. So he'll do lots of workout and then sleep for a very long time after that. Hello, so welcome back. Uh, so we're going to be moving on to a bit more of the history behind the uh, golden hamster, the uh, the Syrian hamster, breadstick. I can't be bothered to do the Latin name again. I have forgot it, to be honest. Okay, right, moving on. Um, the man who discovered the Syrian hamster was George Robert Waterhouse. Um, he was a British uh, zoologist um, and he named the animal uh, after... Well, he named the animal its Latin name, which is, sorry, Mesocretus aratus, which meant golden hair. Um, and this is why, obviously, the Syrian hamster is known as the golden hamster, because of its hair. As you saw on my hamster, it had some golden parts. Um, yeah. Um, so, I will now try and show you uh, a bit of the golden hamster, um, just to show you its jaw. Just, I, I thought it would be quite interesting to see. Um, so, let me just show you, sorry for the camera. Right, okay, so this is the jaw of a hamster, obviously it's not this big, if it was this big, uh, it'd be flipping Godzilla. Um, right, but as you can see, it has front, its front teeth, uh, which you probably didn't see, but um, they are very sharp, um, as you can see from the, the photo, and it also has these back, really big, long back teeth. Now. 
these can be a problem and you have to get them taken to the vets if they grow too long and you've got to cut them down but you can see this is how they break into all like nuts and stuff and how they break into harder foods but it's also how they defend themselves so males obviously will fight um so often hamsters are left with quite serious wounds 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 um and can die from a fight um it's also quite painful if you get your finger stuck. Uh, I know it's happened to my mum. If you're going to want to get your finger stuck, which you probably aren't going to, but you want to get them stuck in these front two because they are not as painful as the back ones. Painful still, but the back ones are... They can puncture through your finger. If you get your finger stuck in them, they can go straight through your finger. That's happened to my mum. Obviously, it's not gone straight through, but it's gone quite deep. Um, so that's probably... Most of the history, obviously, as you can guess, found in Syria. It's pretty much just obvious from that. Um, when they were discovered, hang on, in uh, 1839, uh, so they're quite, quite old of a species. Um, obviously, the house pets are different to wild hamsters. Um, you can get versions which are like teddy bears, um, and they're just almost all brown. Um, but you might be able to hear him now. Um, mine is more of an Apache colour, as mentioned before. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the history. So one thing, one. So one thing I forgot to add was that Syrian hamsters, um, in the wild can live between two to three years. Um, that's an adult in a wild. It's a little bit longer for pet hamsters, obviously, because they're not at the threat of constantly being eaten by birds. Oh, yeah, they're, they're one of the main predators, obviously. Birds, owls, um, any aerial threat. That's why hamsters dig in the tunnels. Um, they spend most of the time under the ground um, because they are uh, in, in the morning, in the day, the morning, because that's when the birds are around, most, most dominant, um, apart from owls. Um, but then they come out when it's a lot cooler, a lot easier to find food. Um, they've got almost, the, their eyes are adapted to the dark, so they can see better in the dark than they can in the light. Um, I honestly don't know. I've not been able to find anything uh, if hamsters are colourblind. Um, I may be wrong, but I think they are. Um, I'm not sure about it, though. Uh, that's something you can go away and look up if you'd like. Um, but, yeah, that's why there's tunnels in his cage, because that's where he can feel most safe during the day. Um, it's a natural instinct, really. Uh, most, well, all hamsters will have it, because their ancestors um, were used to living in the wild, obviously, and hadn't been taken as pets, and they had that fear of being eaten by a bird um, or being attacked um Obviously, because they're not that hard to pick up from the ground. They're not that heavy. They're not like a ton weight. Um, but that's why they come They come out at night. So you're more dominant to hear during the night. My hamster running in his wheel, eating food, drinking like he is now. He's out of his cage. Um, but yeah, that is a bit more history for you. And, and the lifespan covered. Okay, so uh, just for a bit more of a overall of what we've learned and um, this, not lesson, uh, this video of uh, the wild world of pets um, is that the Syrian hamsters, like most hamsters, sleep between six to eight hours, 12 for man. Um, they have special places to feel safe. So they're uh, either where they sleep or just in a corner where they're blocked off from most angles of attack. Um, their cheeks can hold 20% of the body weight, um, which is pretty amazing when you think of a hamster because it's, uh, its body weight isn't that much and 20% of that can just be stored for food. Um, that's why they will have, they survive most of the winter months because they will hibernate, but they have the food to hibernate. Um, exercise, we learnt a bit of, obviously, uh, it wouldn't be like this in the wild, but for my hamster, um, he has short bursts of energy. You can hear him. Short bursts of energy, but he will do that fast. Like, he will 
running his wheel for maybe 10 minutes, but he won't stop running in the wheel. So they have the energy that they've just cooped up all day and then get to use that. Sorry, my voice is breaking. It sounds horrible. Um, obviously, as we learn, they, they were found, they were founded, but they were um, discovered in 1839. Um, they were... What do we say? Discovered in 1839 in Syria by a British zoologist. Um, they have a lifespan of a bit longer than two to three years. My hamster is probably about one he's almost two so he's my longest lived hamster i've had a mouse and a hamster as most other the boys will know um that's not important sorry um but yeah thank you for watching this has been my video um i hope it does well for shanghai science make sure to join us next time where we when we where we discover why dogs like eating slippers <laughs>